What up y'all? Today's video is gonna be air gun shooting. Cheap versus expensive. Who's better? Who offers more? What do I like? What do I don't like? We're all about it. Um, we're shooting here at 30 yards. We're gonna shoot one group at 30 yards and one group at 50 yards with the cheap air gun and the expensive air gun. And we're gonna talk about what I like and what I don't like about both of them. So without further ado, let's get started. So this air gun here is the Crossman Nitro Venom Dusk. It's a 22 caliber. Um, it's a break barrel. I um, mean, if you guys haven't got to watch the video of me reviewing this gun, I'll leave it in the, somewhere in the video here, uh, so you guys can go check that out. I'll leave it in the description as well. Air gun, you can buy this gun or the uh, the brother air gun to this because they no longer make this specific model. They make one very similar. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon for I think 150 bucks somewhere in there. I'm not 100% sure, but we have the Benjamin Marauder 25 cal. I've also done a video on that, but we'll go back into that here in a second. Uh, we're going to talk about some things that I like and I don't like, but first off, we're going to shoot one pellet and see where we're hitting. The thing I don't like about this air gun is that this air gun has a brake barrel. Um, compared to my pre-charged pneumatic Marauder 25 caliber, this air gun uh, is a lot more um, effort included to get loaded, which is not a big deal. I mean, if you're getting into an air gun or for your first pellet gun. Um, a brake barrel is probably where I'd point you. Um, it helps you vary with accuracy, and uh, the one that I would suggest, I also have a video on that. Um, but this 22 right here is not bad at all. The thing I also do not like about this air gun that the expensive air gun has over this is a uh, rate of fire. I can shoot this air gun fully eight shots in probably less than 30 seconds. Um, cock shoot, cock shoot, it's like a um, it's a brake barrel, or this is a brake barrel, this is a, a bolt action, so it's really quick to get rapid successions of uh, shot flow going. That's one thing I do like about this. However, you know, having that air is something to consider. So we just shot eight shots um, from that brake barrel air gun. It's shooting a little bit low right. We had one pill that actually kind of was like a flyer in a good way, and I think it hit a little bit closer to the center than the other ones. Don't necessarily know where that came from, but it's all right. Um, here's kind of what we're looking at. You can see we're kind of all over the board. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then we had two missing. See where one dented, and then the others are not there anymore. A little weird, but we're gonna make adjustments to that scope before we shoot another group with it. Um, and now it's time for the expensive one, the Marauder, so. So now that we have shot our cheap air gun, we're gonna go ahead and shoot our expensive one. This is the Benjamin Marauder 25 cal. Uh, full package, this gun's probably ranging around 750 if I had to guess and do all the math. Um, I'll leave uh, links down below to show you guys kind of what we need to be uh, looking at in order, as far as trying to buy this. So uh, we'll go ahead and shoot for the top left and see how good of a group we can get. So one thing I do like is you guys just got to see me reload this gun after that shot and you saw how much faster that was. compared to the brake barrel. So if you guys are listening to this, this air gun has a lot more power than this air gun. Uh, granted, that is because this is a 25 cal and this is a 22 cal. That's probably the biggest contributing factor to power uh, discrepancy between the two. However, another one that I think is uh, worth mentioning is anytime you go to a compressed air rifle, pre-charged pneumatic is the technical term, this air gun is going to be a lot more powerful because it has um, a lot more air being pushed around the entirety of the pellet throughout the duration of the shot, and it's more efficient. So just thought I should throw that out there. but. Helps if you load. Last shot. It's a really good group. Um, super happy with that, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at it and kind of compare uh, the expensive air gun versus the cheap air gun when you guys actually get to see the, um, the shots up close. Our gun 
You're probably watching this video wondering, is a cheap air gun worth it or is an expensive air gun worth it? Um, the answer is yes. You're like, well, that didn't answer either of my questions. I asked two questions and you just gave me a very non-answerable uh, non answer, I guess. Um, but before we get into it, here's the group from the 25 cal. You can see it's one straight consistent group. Um, they're all touching that paper's actually broke. Um, so very happy with that. Uh, you can see the, 20, the 22 cheaper air gun was kind of all over the board. Um, no, I am not throwing the game. Um, I'm not, you know, trying to shoot purposely bad with the uh, the brake barrel. Um, I'm trying my best with both guns, so I'm keeping it very fair and consistent. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move this target back to 50 yards. I don't have a lot of confidence with the 22, um, but the 25 I know can do it. But we'll see what happens. You never know when you're going to get surprised when you're shooting an air gun. Target back to 50 yards. You guys look way down there. Right behind that fake deer that I've been shooting at all the time. There's our target. Uh, so we're not too god awful far. Back up, back up, back up. 50 yards is not bad, um, especially for um, the pre charged pneumatic marauder. I've killed stuff out to 110 yards with it. I've had that air gun for, I don't know, five or six years. Um, here's the link to the video of it. Um, if you guys have not seen it, go give that a go give that a check out to see if you kind of want to have an interest in a pre charged pneumatic. I think they're definitely worth it. Um, brake barrels have their place too, though. Um, I like brake barrels a lot, but. We're gonna go ahead and shoot 50 yard group um, with the 25 cal and the 22 cal and see how it happens. Alrighty, let's load this bad boy up. We're gonna go ahead and shoot the 25 cal at 50 yards because I already have it in the gun vise, or the rest I should say. Um, we're gonna go ahead and load this magazine up. That way we can shoot faster than any brake barrel once we have this loaded up. I will say that when you're loading a magazine like this for any pre-charged pneumatic air rifle, um, that's something to consider. It does take time to load them. Um, compared to a brake barrel, you just load, shoot, load, shoot. But I buy personally uh, two magazines. That way I can just have 16 shots for, for you know per fill, and then I can just go two magazines and then I'm done. I don't have to worry about loading it. So it saves me a lot of time in the long run. Brake barrel, we're gonna aim a little bit high because I, I kind of anticipate a lot more drop from the 22 brake barrel than the pre-charged pneumatic 25, but you never know. We'll take a look. We're at nine power on our scope. And shoot the best group that we possibly can. That one was left and low. There's two in the same hole. three in the same hole. There's four in the same hole. Last shot. Oh, we're done. Shooting your air guns often is sometimes you can throw them off. Like for this instance, you know, I shot this air gun about a week and a half ago and it was dead on. I'd shot starlings and sparrows with it. You guys actually have seen uh, shorts of me post on my YouTube shorts uh, feed of me shooting a sparrow off this birdhouse we're walking right by. But I think I kind of messed with it a little bit too much. Um, shooting just a little bit left, but the grouping is still good. Um, we're gonna go ahead and show you guys the group and then we're gonna shoot the 22 caliber and see kind of how we can get from 50 yards. I'm not too hopeful, but we'll see. 50 yards is not looking too bad. It's just a little bit left, um, a little bit low maybe, but we're gonna go ahead and make a few adjustments to that scope, but we're gonna shoot the 22 caliber first. And uh, who knows, maybe the 22 will just have a magic group and shoot perfect and I'll shoot it at the center target right there and we'll go from there. All right, now it is time for the brake barrel. We no longer need this on the hot seat, so we'll switch guns. Load this bad boy up and we'll go from there. Okay. Like I said, we're going to aim high um, at the orange line in the center of the target because I know this is going to drop a lot more than that 25 did. And uh, we'll see what happens. I hit somewhere, I just have no clue where. <laughs> Say action on that one. I don't know where this is hitting. If you're buying a brake barrel, 
I would pretty much recommend you stay within 30 yards or less unless you buy a really high dollar one. Now this, like I said, you can buy this gun for $150 on Amazon, but if you're shooting squirrels, you know, maybe rabbits, starlings, and sparrows in your backyard 25, 30 yards when you don't want anyone to know, I don't condone that. Um, this would be the air gun for you. I'd highly recommend it, but if you're not, if you're wanting to shoot like I am right now, 50 yards, you kind of lose so much power that it doesn't even become uh, profitable to shoot that far. So, but it's alright. It's not hitting there with the kind of speed that uh, the other target is, or the other gun is, excuse me. That, uh, that 25, it shoots them and you can hear it hit and you can see it go all the way through the target. You can see chunks of wood and stuff flying out the back when I, when I shoot it. So, there's a noticeable difference. It's not looking too good, but that'll be our last pellet. We've been shooting. We've been kind of looking at uh, both groups. This 22 just really doesn't have the power that it needs to in order to get uh, all the way out there. Well, this one's going to make this audio terrible. Um, doesn't have the speed that it needs to really get out there and stay stable and uh, consistent, but it's fun to plank around, and it's like throwing a Hail Mary with an air gun is the best way I can put it. So our last group <laughs> is going to be at this uh, center target, and you can see... So this, this shot, this shot, this shot, and this shot were from the 25, or the 22, excuse me, all over the board. So we're going to go ahead and shoot our last group with the 25 at the center, and uh, hopefully with any luck we can actually uh, get a consistent group and we can see how tight we can stack it. I'm going to take my time as much as I can, and we're going to try to keep it less than an inch. Um, we'll see what happens, though. You never know. All right. So we're shooting our last group at 50 yards. We're shooting it towards the center target. There goes a... Robin right above my head, probably looking for bugs. You're not a Robin or a Cardinal. Hey, buddy. Wait a minute. That isn't a Robin. What is that for? Uh, Scarlet Tanager. I don't know how well you guys can kind of see it. He's like right above me. Wow. He's so pretty. I wish I could get up and take my uh, and take a picture of him, but I know if I get up, he'll probably just fly off. So there he goes. Wow. Cool. All right, back to what I was saying before that beautiful bird came over my back. Um, I chose this gun um, for the cheap versus expensive uh, for multiple reasons. Um, one, the power is just undeniable of this air gun. This air gun, I've killed stuff a lot bigger than you know just a regular squirrel, rabbit, starling, sparrow. I've killed uh, coyotes, yes, coyotes. I've shot coyotes with this gun and killed them. Uh, I've shot, what else have I shot? Possums, coons, um, anything that you can catch in a trap line I've also killed with this. Um, you know, with live traps, and I'll start the trapping series up when trapping season's uh, back open. Stay looking, stay looking for that this uh, this winter slash fall. We're gonna have a lot of fun trapping, trying to get some bobcats and coyotes. Anything. This would be the air gun that I would choose over the brake barrel, simply for the fact that it's more reliable, accurate, and has more power. But without further ado, let's go ahead and shoot our 50-yard group and see if we don't suck. has so much power when it's getting down there. Last shot. Yep, that's right though. We'll make adjustments to it. Uh, we shot at the middle middle target for, um, you know, just to see how we were going to be grouping in the 50 caliber, not 50 caliber, 50 yards with the 25 caliber um, is a lot more impressive and a lot more consistent and reliable. Um, I'll show you guys the group, but we are going to make adjustments to it and shoot one more group and go from there. Excuse me, I got the burps. You can see very centralized group, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I don't know, maybe eight's probably in there somewhere too, but we're gonna make adjustments and aim for that point and hopefully we can get some stacked in there. Should I get a scope camera? You guys think I should do that? I think I should get a scope camera. I don't know which one I'm gonna get. If you have recommendations on a scope camera that you are uh, that you like or that you shoot, uh, leave it down in the comments and let me know because I'd be kinda interested to see what you guys are shooting and uh, what you're rocking on your setups. I've been leaning towards the Tacticam, uh, the 5.0, it has that slow motion in 4K. 
uh, that's what I film in so I figured instead of having to render it in post uh, post operations or post cut editing I can just put it all in the scope and go from there so I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing though but leave me let me know what you guys are thinking let me know I'm curious that's a good pellet to start with A good group right there so far. I'm liking it. Now she's kind of eating her up a little bit. Finish these last few shots out. Hopefully we don't ruin it. Man, that's a lot better. They're all right there. Complain about that at all. Last shot. Hope the wind's moving my paper target down there. This shot has this or this group has been a lot more promising than that first one. I made the adjustments. Um, I think they're all within like a full inch of each other, so that's doing pretty good. This wind's dancing my paper down there on the target. I didn't tack down that one side, and I don't want to ruin this group. I kind of want to make this the best group that I possibly can. So let this paper settle down, and we'll get another shot in here for you. Perfect. Love it. Good shooting right there. So we just shot that group. It turned out to be a lot better. I'm a lot closer to being on target. That last one I kind of had the paper flip up from the air when I, as soon as I shot, but it's still definitely close enough to kill whatever I was going to be aiming at, um, especially if it's anything like the size of a sparrow or a startling or a squirrel or anything like that. So not bad. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this group. Might load my gun up and uh, shoot some sparrows or starlings, but that's definitely a lot better, a lot closer. See how that paper's flicking? That's what was happening to me, but... 50 yard group, not bad. Size of my thumb covers the whole entire group, so that is not bad at all. I absolutely love that. If you guys enjoyed today's video, uh, leave me a like, a comment, and a subscribe. Um, like I said, let me know what kind of scope cam you guys are rolling with. I'd be curious to know, so... That being said, Hope you guys loved today's video, and I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye!